good to be back. Welcome to the RS6. It's been a little bit while since this car has been featured, but I've been reading the comments and I know you guys seem to love this car, as do I. And today I wanted to take the opportunity to recap what it's like living with this car as I'm approaching 5,000 miles with the RS6 in what seems to be such a small amount of time. Needless to say, so far it has been absolutely fantastic, but I wanted to cover off a few areas and discuss performance and luxury and practicality and all of the fantastic things that this package brings in one car. First off, let's not beat around the bush. Introducing the Stuttgart Symphony that is the V8 twin turbo in the RS6. like a Spitfire than a car. It's so cool. And the pops and bangs, okay, we know it's an engineered sound. It's added in for drama. But I think if you're buying an RS badge, if you're buying an RS6 or any RS car, you want to know what you're bought into. You want to experience that engine, that pops and bangs and barbels. I recently drove the Audi TT RS. And for all its greatness, the thing that I did miss is on under braking, downshifting and lift off he just didn't pop and bang it might not be important it might not sound like a big thing but honestly I can't quantify to you just how much more of an experience little things like that make to your overall drive so thanks to Audi for just removing the conventional Audi polish and just throwing out the rule book giving it some drama because it really enhances the experience of what I believe an RS car should be so Let's start why we're here, why I've got this car, and it couldn't be any better timed because, as they say in Game of Thrones, winter is coming, and that's where this car is going to thrive. The Quattro system in this, we're only two weeks into October, and already leaves are falling off the trees where I live. The roads turn into this sort of mush of a mess because tractors are coming in and out of fields. The temperature drops. Everything starts to get slippy and greasy. And unlike conventional 4x4, Quattro approaches things differently. And this is what I've learned with this car. When I drive the Range Rover, for all of its fantastic 4x4 off-road ability, the Quattro system is designed to maximize your grip on road. And I know, God, just saying this even sounds like a flipping advert, but it's not. I'm just trying to convey it to you how well this thing works. I've noticed when I'm driving the Range Rover, famous for a great 4x4, when it's wet and damp, the car isn't there to give you a dynamic driving experience. Okay, it's there to take you across a wet field or up a slippy rock face or through a stream really well, which is great in certain circumstances, but let's face it, 99% of the time we're in a car, we are actually driving these cars on road. We're driving them on tarmac. And in England, around autumn, winter, our tarmac gets pretty unenjoyable. And for all of my love of supercars, in times like this, when you've got performance tires on, the tires on the LT are basically track tires. If I put my foot down in conditions like this, the traction control would come on and just stop me. Or depending on what mode I was in, I would end up in that hedge pretty quickly. And the same goes for the F12, probably even more so. Um, and GT3, for all of its fantastic grip, because the engine's over the rear wheels, it still doesn't have the same grip and composure, particularly under full throttle, that something like this does. And that's why this thing exists. I want to have a practical, comfy, cozy car that's going to batter the elements through autumn, winter, but I don't want to have to compromise on my everyday driving experience. Because at heart, I'm a petrol head, I'm a driver. And this thing so far has ticked all of those boxes. The Quattro, rather than helping you across a field, when I come out of a corner, as soon as I'm past an apex with this, and you smash that throttle, honestly, the swell of torque, I wanna describe the torque to you as if it's almost a tangible matter. It's like this 
ball of talk putty under your foot. You sort of squelch into it and it just hunkers down and it's you feel it in your back, in your kidneys. The whole thing swells up, it pushes you back in this seat and there isn't an ounce of slip. I haven't had a light come on the dash when traction control is trying to manage me. It just hunkers down, squats and fires you out. Now, you've got to get the apex right. If you're going to mash the throttle before that, chances are you're going to you know, experience some understeer or some traction control problems. But if you're getting the driving line right with this thing, I've yet to experience a condition that this thing doesn't like. So yes, performance and drive ability of the RS6 so far is doing everything that I hoped it would. You really now, the other thing we have to talk about is the practicality of it because ultimately this thing is able to take you from naught to 60 in around three and a half seconds, but you can do it with a dog in the back, three in those seats behind me, me and a passenger, music on. The engineers that worked on the RS6 obviously designed this car knowing that it, it has the ability to carry boot full of stuff and lots of people. So it's gonna be operating under load. When you get this thing under load, it, it doesn't change. It, in fact, there's this weird thankfulness that comes back from it. It sort of seems to thrive on being used. It likes to get stuff thrown at it and tested, you know? And I love that for it. And there's something, the man in us as well, I'm in my element when I absolutely use a car to its full. But there's this weird gratification that I get out of driving this car when it's dirty. I know that's really odd, but it just it just feels like a car that's meant to take it. And again, throwing stuff in the back, friends in, music on, crunching through the rain. There's just something like pseudo manly about it, you know? And I really enjoy getting that out of it. So yes, this really, the idea was that it was just a quick recap on what it's been living with the RS6 for the first 5,000 miles. I guess we could talk about complaints. I'm going to just say one thing which might be quite trivial. To some it's a big deal and to me actually it was more the big deal than I thought it was. The cup holders in this thing are atrocious. Hear me out, they're so crap. Not only can you not fit in two cups of coffee because when you put them in the coffees touch and they therefore have to go in at a v-shape to fit in and so the coffee kind of ends up spinning out of your uh, cap but also the armrest here overlaps with the space of the cup holders so when you end up putting your armrest down and you are essentially locked in your coffee so when you want to take it out you can't because your arm rest is there really annoying or you put it in after the arm rest is down and you end up opening your coffee cup from the lid, catching on the armrest and it pinging off. Sounds trivial, it's happened to me countless times and I've spilled my coffee twice as a result. The other thing is you think soda coffee because it doesn't fit in these goddamn cup holders so I'm gonna have a bottle of something, a bottle of water maybe. And you'll stick that in and at first you think that's fine, doesn't spill anywhere and it fits in okay, but bottles tend to sit tall, don't they? And the problem with that is the holders are right in front of the area where you control everything to do with this car. So if you put a bottle of water in, or heaven forbid, two bottles of water, you're always arching over the bottles to try and control stuff. I I, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd sooner not have them. I'd honestly sooner not have them. That's one thing. I mean, the Porsche, the GT3 with a roll cage and two seats, the best cup holders in the world. Honest to God, they're amazing. They fold out, they fold away, they adapt, and they're in the way of nothing, and they don't take up any space. These things, they're crap. Absolutely crap. So anyway, I know that's super trivial, and I don't have many bad things to say about this car, but with my short time in living with it, that is one thing. Anyway, guys, 
as always, thanks for watching. This is just a quick recap, really, to sort of quench your thirst for content for the RS6. I do have some road trips lined up soon, and no doubt the RS6 will be joining us then, uh, when we can hopefully put it through its paces and maybe show it some snow, which would be awesome. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ciao!